The following is a slightly historical series on the Romance of the Three Kingdoms era of China's history. Because this is based off of a video game and myself playing it, there will be a lot of uh, incorrect information that we will correct using the help of Wikipedia. For those of you who want to learn more about Dynasty Warriors or the Romance of the Three Kingdoms era, I suggest reading the book. Please enjoy the following presentation. That'll bring us to the second half of this episode, where we are going to be playing as Huang Zhong. Huang Zhong being the man who kills Zhao Ho Yuan at the Battle of Mount Ding Jun, a veteran officer of Liu Bei's. Oh, I thought that was going to continue into another sentence. A veteran officer of Liu Bei's. He is especially adept with his bow and always eager to prove that he is just as good as any younger officer. Huang Zhong was from Nanyang Commandery, which is around present-day Nanyang. He initially served as a general of the household under Liu Biao, the governor of Jing province. He was tasked to defend Changsha Commandery with Liu Biao's nephew, Liu Pan. Liu Biao died in 208, and his successor Liu Kong surrendered Jing to the warlord Cao Cao. Huang Zhong was appointed as an acting major general, and he continued serving in Changsha under Huan Zhuan, the commandery administrator. Let's see, it doesn't seem like we know when he was born, but he did die in the year 220. Huang Zhong. Huang Zhong. Huang Zhong. <laughs> I, I appreciate the pronunciation button on the, the Wikipedia pages. Huang Zhong. Huang Zhong. So, uh, interestingly enough, Huang Zhong, uh, only comes on into service under Liu Bei after the Battle of Red Cliff. So let's see how his story picks up here. I am Huang Zhong. I was serving under Han Xuan in Changsha until I met Liu Bei during his campaign to subdue Southern Jing. And now, I serve the virtuous and heroic Liu Bei as one of his officers. Along with my mighty bow, I will follow him to the far corners of the land to help him realize his destiny. Together, we will find a land to serve as the basis of a kingdom that shall be just as virtuous and prosperous as he is. Warriors of Chengdu, I challenge you. Wang Zhang. The purpose of this invasion of Chengdu is to allow Master Liu Bei to take Liu Zhang's land of Yi. Huang Zhang, you shall go through Mianzhu and head for the east gate of Chengdu. If you are able, try and assist other units which are in need of your help. So, following Cao Cao's defeat at the Battle of Red Cliffs in the same year, the victorious allied forces of Liu Bei and Sun Quan took over various commanderies in southern Jing, including Changsha. Huang Zhuan surrendered Changsha, and Huang Zhong came to serve under Liu Bei. Since receiving a military appointment in Jiammang, Huang Zhong had performed well in Liu Bei's conquest of Yi from 212 to 214. He was always the first to charge into enemy formations, and among the army, none could match his martial prowess and bravery. After Yi province was taken, Huang Zhong was promoted to general who attacks rebels. Although I feel that our lord is reluctant to attack Liu Zhang, we have no other choice. We must rise and win this land for the benefit of our lord. Liu Bei is a little bitch. Yep, this is the battle I was thinking it was. Where Liu Bei is like, eh, I cannot participate because this goes against my ideals. It's like, then, then why'd, you, why'd you do it? Why'd you call the battle, huh? This battle goes against everything I stand for. I cannot fight. We'll surround Chengdu and force out Liu Zhang. Zhao Yun and Zhang Fei cover the south gate. Huang Zhang, take the east. I'll cover the north. <laughs> I didn't used to dislike the the three sworn brothers, but after playing this game and after reading some more of the history, I'm like, 
Dang, these guys just kind of suck. called <laughs> man of Face me, Yan Yan, and prepare to die. Old man, where do you get all this strength that you're showing? My lord Leo Bay has a dream. I have young friends that fight by my side. It is both of these that give me my strength. Besides, I haven't got the time to grow old. Attack my family, forced to surrender, to give up the land of my fathers. Ah, I'm sure to be the laughing stock of future peoples. Master Liu Zhang, forgive me. But my ideal has no place for doubt. I shall restore the Han Empire, and it shall all start here in Shu. I have defeated Liu Zhang and gained the lands of Shu. If it weren't for everybody's support, I would have forsaken both justice and the lands of Shu in the name of humanity. Now that I have the rich and fertile lands of Shu under my control, I shall not fall behind Cao Cao and Wu. Finally, the path to a land that exists for the people has been opened. What's up, Type 1? Ooh! I, fi I got a horse! I, what was I just saying earlier? <laughs> Liu Bei obtained the lands of Yi and joined in the struggle for control of the land. Apparently, this was all thought out by the strategist Zhu Ge Liang. Simply amazing. So, now we're going to make our way to Mount Ding Shu in Guangzhou. That Zhu Ge Liang, he's saying I'm too old for this and should stay home. How dare he criticize me? I'll prove him wrong by showing him that my bow and fighting spirit are unmatched on the battlefield. There is still some life in these old bones yet. So in 217, Liu Bei started a campaign to seize control of Han Zhong Commandery, which was under Cao Cao's control. His force encountered resistance led by Zhao Ho Yuan at Yangping Pass, which we already watched the or we already did Zhao Ho Yuan. The confrontation dragged on for more than a year until one night in 219, when Liu Bei set fire to the barbed fence around Zhao Ho Yuan's camp at the foot of Mount Ding Jun. Alarmed by the attack, Zhao Ho Yuan sent Zhang He to defend the eastern corner of the camp while he guarded the south. Thank you. That smells really good. while he guarded the south. Uh, Liu Bei's main force pressed against Zhang He, outmatching the latter. Zhao Ho Yuan dispatched, dispatched a fraction of his own troops to help Zhang He. Even though Zhao Ho Yuan's soldiers were far more experienced, Huang Zhong still rallied his men, accompanied by thundering drums with impressive shouts. They descended upon Zhao Ho Yuan's force. From here, we shall advance our army to Mount Ding Jun in Hanjiang. If we, in order to attack oh, the enemy position on Mount Dingjun, we must first take Mount Tiandang. Everybody, begin moving towards there from your current positions. The enemy army is centered around their general, Sha Ho Yuan, and also contains Zhang He and Xu Zhu. Huang Zhang, you must be careful not to overestimate your abilities here. <laughs> what a view! The beautiful sky above, and the enemy camp below. <laughs> Astounding! At long last, a worthy opponent. Take this momentum straight to the enemy camp! This is it! I won't back down, I won't give in, and I definitely won't lose! Ah, excellent timing! Let's finish this! 
I know I said this during the Zhao Ho Yuan episode, but I really love how he like acts like an anime character. Valuable item again. Not bad, old man. I suppose I can let you win just this once. Dear enemy, you are an excellent warrior. However, every time you insulted me, it only served to make me stronger. We expelled the Wei army from Hanzhong and created a foothold towards the center of the continent. These fertile lands shall serve the kingdom of Shu well in the battles ahead. The battle became a rout, and Zhao Ho Yuan was killed in action. The victory at Mount Dingjun was a major stepping stone to the conquest of Han Zhong. Huang Zhong was promoted to general who attacks the West for his contributions in the Han Zhong campaign. In the same year, Liu, Ble Liu Bei proclaimed himself king of Han Zhong, a symbolic move comparing himself to Emperor Gao, the founding emperor of the Han dynasty. He wanted to appoint Huang Zhong as general of the rear, placing the latter on the same level as three other senior generals Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, and Ma Chao. However, Zhuge Liang told Liu Bei, Huang Zhong's fame is far from that of Guan Yu, Zhang Fei, and Ma Chao. If they are all given equal status, Zhang Fei and Ma Chao will probably not object because they have been with Huang Zhong all this while and have witnessed his contributions. But Guan Yu is stationed far away and he may not agree. Liu Bei answered, I will handle this myself, and tasked Fei Shi with traveling to Jing to inform Guan Yu about his appointment. Then he elevated all the four generals to the same status. Huang Zhong also received the title of a secondary marquee. With our army gaining power, we have realized the Three Kingdoms' strategy. Surely Wei and Wu will plot together to try and bring us down. We must keep our guard up at all times. After conquering Guan Zhong, Wei, Wu, and Shu became bitter rivals. Will this chaos that plagues the land and its occupants ever come to an end? It was during this time that Liu Bei passed away. Perhaps the pain of losing his sworn brothers was too much for him. Such a pity to have died so young. Liu Bei, you just watch. You will carry on your will and create the kingdom built upon the foundations of virtue and humanity that you dreamed of making. Uh, this is a little strange because we're skipping, uh, because in the book, obviously, Huang Zhong dies in battle, but we are skipping the battle that he dies in battle in because we're skipping Liu Bei's death here, which... Liu Bei died after the, uh, what was this? The Battle of, uh, Zhao Ting against Wu. So. Even though we lost Liu Bei, we must continue to follow his ambitions and guide the lands toward peace under the rule of Shu. Huang Zhang, I am counting on you once again. Before we challenge Wei and Wu for control of the land, we must deal Ugh. with the impending threat to the south. If we can secure that area, it shall prove beneficial in achieving our ultimate goal. <sighs> the Nanzhong campaigns. Okay, so anyway, um, Huang Zhong in the book, The Romance of the Three Kingdoms, he dies in battle at, uh, or in the battle of Zhao Ting. Zhao Ting being the battle where uh, Liu Bei is like, hey, they killed Guan Yu, I have to take revenge, man. You know, Liu Bei, being the little bitch he is, loses the battle. It's a complete rout. Gets destroyed completely. Uh, this was the one with the uh, Stone Sentinel Maze, if I remember correctly. And then, uh, after that, let's see. Uh, that was, you know, in the Romance of the Three Kingdoms, you know, Liu Bei wanted to go to war to avenge Guan Yu. Everyone said, don't do it. And he's like, man! I must because Liu Bei is a fucking idiot um, and in this battle the Shu general Huang Zhong participates in the campaign even though he is already over 70 years old he slays Pan Zhang's subordinate Shi Ji and defeats Pan Zhang in an engagement on the first day 
On the second day, while pursuing the retreating Pan Zhang, he falls into an ambush, is surrounded by Zhou Tai, Han Dong, and Ling Tong, and Pan Zhang. He is hit by an arrow, fired by Ma Zhang. Huan Jing and Zhang Bao save him, but he dies from his wound that night. Liu Bei mourns his death. Since the Battle of Xiaoting historically took place between 221 and 222, going by the novel's accounts, Huang Zhong's year of death should be around that time. But uh, what actually happens is Huang Zhong dies in 220. Cause of death was not specified, so probably natural causes. Uh, in October or November of 260, Liu Shan awarded Huang Zhong the posthumous title of Marquis Gong, which literally means unyielding Marquis. Huang Zhong's son, Huang Zhu, had already died at a young age before him and did not have any descendants. His tomb was first discovered in Chengdu during the Qing Dynasty in 1825. The tomb was repaired and a temple dedicated to him was built next to it. The temple, the statue, the plaques, and the tomb were heavily damaged with its coffin emptied during a, the Cultural Revolution. So you can thank communists for not being able to pay respects to a general of uh, the Shu army. But uh, yeah, Huang Zhong died. If It would have been better if we actually had the Battle of Xie Ting, even though I actually hate that battle in this game. But now we're go getting into a fictitious territory where uh, Huang Zhong is still alive and participating in the battles, which... He wasn't there, which this happens for a lot of characters where they're not actually there for these battles. So let's just get through it. For this battle, we shall spread out our troops and press the attack on the front lines. However, this is unknown territory, so we cannot be sure of what troubles may await us. Thanks to everybody's help, the Nanman King has pledged his loyalty to us. This campaign was not without merit. Now our southern borders will be safe from attack. All that remains is to continue forward. Wei, Wu, and Shu. The era of the land being divided in three is over. Now is the time to begin the road towards unification. Guy who should we be dead by now. We proceed along Chen Kang Road and attack Wei's Chen Kang Castle. If we can take this castle, then it will clear a path for us toward Chang'an. Chen Kang Castle is tightly guarded. We will have to use our siege weapons to overcome the castle's defenses. We also must beware of the enemy troops that will try and interfere with our siege. Huang Zhang, please protect the supply base. It will be critical for this battle. You are one of Shu's most capable officers, which is why I am entrusting this task to you. We have managed to secure Chen Kang Castle under the control of Shu. It was a siege unprecedented in terms of man, horse, and weapons, but we managed to win none the same. At last, Chen On lies before us. The final battle with Wei is near at hand. Perhaps we should rest a bit before it is decided who shall reign supreme over the land. Sorry for the background noise. <laughs> Everyone, including our enemies, is becoming fatigued by this chaos. Perhaps this would be a good time to go and put an end to it once and for all. Zhuge Liang must be thinking the same thing. He prepared a large army and led them to attack Wei. At that moment, however, Wu came and attacked Bai Di Castle. How dare they attack while our backs are turned. No matter, they are simply rushing to their deaths. Let us destroy them and bring an end to this chaos. The Three Kingdom strategy has gone on for quite some time now. We must try and defeat Wei and Wu while we still have the chance. The next battle will be the defense of Bai Di Castle. Huang Zhang, I would like for you to lead the army and raise the morale of the troops. I am counting on you. 
There is a reason I cannot go to the battlefield, but I have prepared a number of strategies just for this type of occasion. In this battle, it shall be us who defeats Wu. Jing Kai! You should not be out here on the battlefield. No, I should. This is for my father and for Shu. It'll be okay. My lord, I shall protect you. Fighting men, the future is ours. Advance in the name of Shu. Long live our Lord. That's right. Go forth. Your passion fuels the flames of war. I may lack your strength. But these old bones can still lead the way. We defended Bai Di Castle and defeated Sun Quan thanks to everybody's bravery and father watching over us from the heavens. I, however, was unable to do anything. From now on, I vow to become strong like everybody else, to protect this land that father and so many others gave their lives to protect. I ask that you follow me and lend me your assistance. It was during the final days of the year 200 AD when the Han Dynasty saw its end. Its demise ushered in a new era of chaos, brought on by several regional lords vying to rule China. There were those who sought absolute power, as well as those who fought for justice, and some simply fought for the sake of their beliefs. Many would rise and fall in their attempts to dominate the land. Huang Zhang from the Nanyang region. He first aided Liu Biao in the defense of Changsha and served Han Xuan after Liu Biao's death. Although an expert in the martial arts and an incredible archer, it was not until the latter years of his life that his skills would be recognized. It was when Liu Bei took control of Jing that Huang Zhang came to join him. He was proud to serve his lord, and despite being 60 years old, he showed incredible prowess on the battlefield. In 219 AD, Shu would engage themselves in the Battle of Han Zhang, Receiving orders from Liu Bei to capture Mount Dingjun, Huang Zhang advanced into Wei territory. There he encountered Sha Ho Yuan. Huang Zhang positioned his troops atop a mountain and stormed down onto the enemy. Overwhelmed by the attack, Sha Ho Yuan and his forces were decimated, allowing Huang Zhang to give Shu an important victory. Liu Bei appointed Huang Zhang to join the likes of Guan Yu by becoming one of the five tiger generals. After Liu Bei's death, Huang Zhang decided to live out his lord's ambitions and continued to fight. Having helped establish the kingdom of Shu, Huang Zhang retired, leaving everything for the younger generation. His name would become more and more famous the older he grew.
These tales, long forgotten in the flows of time, are about the legends of which no one can recall. Way Yan. He's a cool character. So we won at Wu Zhang Plains, eh? I guess the land is settled then. From now on. It's up to you guys to pick up where I left off. I did what I came for. There's nothing left for me now. But yeah, like I mentioned earlier, Huang Zhong died very early on in these campaigns, right after the Battle of Ding Jun, for an unknown reason, probably old age, considering he's uh, depicted as an old ass man. And uh, although we don't know when he was born, he did become one of the five Tiger Generals, despite only really being in like two battles, which is a little strange, but uh, you know, we don't know what he was doing behind the scenes, you know, what kind of relationship with Liu Bei he did have, but uh, I do think it is a little bit strange that he was, uh, you know, one of the five Tiger Generals. He didn't really do that much, but either way, that is his story. Next episodes are going to be tomorrow where we are going to cover... Let's see, we're gonna go back to uh, Wu. And the next person is going to be Lu Mong. After that, we're coming back to Wei once again to do Zhu Huang. 